Y'all, we're making meatloaf. Come on. Welcome to Highfalutin Low Carb, the random web series where we find and test the best low carb recipes this crazy internet has to offer. Today, we're going to be tackling low carb meatloaf. Stay tuned. All right, guys, low carb meatloaf. Can it be done? Now, you're probably thinking, Wesley, uh, meatloaf is just a loaf of meat. It's got to be low carb. But you would be surprised in traditional meatloaf how many things add a lot of carbs to what could be a low carb option. Bread crumbs, you've got whole milk often to make it moist. Um, glazes like with ketchup or barbecue or brown sugar. A lot of aromatic vegetables like onions and bell peppers. There are a lot of ways to add a lot of carbs to meatloaf. So today we're testing two of the most popular recipes online. And when I say most popular, it's not unusual for the recipe that I usually present to have maybe a few dozen positive comments or if it's really good there'll be maybe a hundred or two hundred reviews one of these I think it's four and a half stars maybe it's five stars um, it has over 800 reviews so <laughs> the first recipe we're testing today is juicy keto meatloaf and this is by the website healthy recipes blogs.com with an s blogs.com and then our second recipe is bacon wrapped Keto Meatloaf, and this is by the website dietdoctor.com. So I'm excited to try both of those and let you know what I think about those. Before we begin, I need to give a huge thank you to Thrive Market for sponsoring this video. Thrive Market is an online marketplace on a mission to make healthy living easy and affordable for everybody. You can shop for hundreds or thousands of name brand products at up to 25% to 50% off traditional retail prices. Now, like a lot of big box discount stores, there is a membership fee to join Thrive Market. Um, they've got a, a couple of options. You can do a one month membership uh, or a year membership. That's what I choose to do because if you choose the year, you get it down to less than five bucks a month. Um, but what's great about it is that they have a, um, a happiness guarantee. If you don't actually save in money, savings, of the products you buy by the end of your term, they'll actually refund you the difference in that. They also have a um, give back program, which means that for every membership they sell, Thrive Market gives one away to somebody in need, a family in need, a, a first responder, a veteran. Um, and it's amazing to see, even here in my own comment section, how many people have responded and say, hey, I'm part of the, the give back program and it's so nice to be able to have uh, options, healthy options that are affordable for me. So thank you so much Thrive Market for sponsoring this video. Uh, I want you guys to use the link here down below. If you use that link, you will actually get a, a, a couple of free gifts up to like 24 bucks um, for uh, signing up today. So um, do that, it's, it's risk free. Like I said, if you don't actually save the money in your membership fee, they will refund you the difference. You can cancel within 30 days either. Anyway, so um, thank you Thrive Market for sponsoring this video. I really appreciate it. It's sponsorships like yours that keep channels like mine on the air, especially during crazy times like this. So I thank you for your support. If you guys want to support me, go support them by going to the link down below and checking out what they have to offer. So thank you so much. And now let's make some meatloaf. All right, guys, so we're here for our first recipe, and this is Juicy Keto Meatloaf by the website HealthyRecipesBlogs.com. And that, the link will be down here on the screen as well as in the video description below. If you're new here, um, uh, welcome. Uh, if you're not new here, welcome back. Uh, but if, you, if you've been here any length of time, you know that I don't give exact measurements for recipes. These are not my recipes. I'm just here to test these recipes. The people that did do the hard work of creating these, they deserve the traffic. So I ask that you go to their website, it's going to be here on the screen, and you'll find all the exact ingredients for the recipes that we're going to make here today. But for now, we're going to start with a fairly simple recipe. There's not a whole lot to this. And we, we start with an egg, and then we're going to add some spices to this uh, before we add our ground beef, right? So to this is going to be, uh, this is garlic powder, onion powder, and a little bit of dried thyme. Okay, so in that goes, and then standard salt and pepper, right? So all this goes in the pool here. You need a large, this is pepper, black pepper. Again, if you need to know exact ingredient amounts, use the link down below. And let's just create a little bit of a slurry with this egg. And you need a pretty large bowl because um, she's correct in what she says here that um, the most important part about meatloaf is not overworking it. If you spend too much time 
um, handling that beef, whether it be with your hands, which we're going to do here today, or a, a spatula, whatever you're going to use, um, you will make it tough. It is easy for that to become tough and hard. So the less you touch it and, and mess around with it, the better off we're all going to be. So now to this, we're going to add our ground beef, and she specifically says that it needs to be um, 85-15 and no leaner than that and um, so that's what i've done here so we're going to add this is actually i will tell you this amount it's uh, two pounds of, of ground beef so in this goes into our bowl all right wash my hands hold on so we've got our ground beef and our egg and our spices in the bowl and to this we're going to add a couple of things. The first is finely grated Parmesan cheese and she specifically says um, do not use shredded cheese. It needs to be finely grated. So do it, uh, take a hunk of Parmesan and put it in a blender or, or something like that or you can, if you can buy it pre-ground, that, that, it's up to you. Now I'm going to tell you the way I put this in there kind of matters because if you just dump everything in the center of all this beef, you've got to work that beef really a lot with your hands to evenly distribute everything. And that's what we're trying to avoid doing is touching and messing with it too much to keep it light and fluffy. Um, same applies for hamburger uh, uh, patties, by the way, as well. Um, so it helps to actually spread this out over the mixture so that you've already started incorporating it before you even began the recipe. Also, a little bit of almond flour and um, you know I always sift my almond flour because I leave it in the um, pantry so sift this over and this sort of helps uh, it acts as a breadcrumb replacement and sort of absorbs some of the moisture that's going to come out of this beef because if you've made meatloaf you know that it, it you know it's gonna it's gonna um, uh, let out a lot of, of liquid and this is gonna help with some of that capture some of that so Impeccably clean hands. Let's just mix this together, okay? Okay, so we have incorporated most of this. I'm trying my best just to lift, separate, incorporate, right? So breaking up some of these larger, harder uh, balls of meat. And now from here, um, we are not going to bake this in this pan. You see I have it here and it's lined with um with saran wrap with uh with cling wrap we are not baking it in here and most recipes that i've seen and even before lo the low carb situation is don't make your meatloaf in a loaf pan because it's just going to sit and bake in its own grease and it's not going to crisp up and it, we want the outside kind of crispy so uh, she uses a technique of loading it into a baking pan a baking loaf pan just to get a good shape on it. And then we're gonna transfer this to a foil lined baking sheet and bake it that way so that it actually gets crispy on the outside and the glaze does its job and all that good stuff. So let me get this out of the way, hold on. So just be careful here. And this is where you can, you know, you wanna make it into a loaf but you're not trying to push hard, but you do want it to hold together, right? I mean, it's got to hold together in the oven. Um, so just get it into a, a rough rectangle shape, and then we're gonna lift it out of here and place it on our pan. Now, she also said uh, she had some very specific rules, <laughs> and so we're gonna follow them because you know I follow recipes exactly as written. That's the only fair way to review a recipe. Can't make changes to it and then make a review out of it, um, is that this needs to be cooked in a, on a metal baking pan with foil and not parchment and not in a glass pan. So um, that, that got the best crust and that it needed to be cooked at 350 degrees and no hotter and no cooler. Um, so that's what we're gonna do. All right, I'm gonna wash my hands. I'll be right back, hold on. We've got our foil lined baking sheet and we're just gonna put this down here so that it comes out as a nice rectangular loaf. Just discard all of that and wash that pan. So here we go. Let's just kind of pull it back together in case anything broke apart. Again, don't fuss with it too much, but you do want it to hold together. Gotta wash my hands again. All right, so and from here, we're gonna add a glaze. This is sugar-free ketchup. Um, I prefer, I generally use the um, Primal Kitchen, I think, brand. It's, um, you can get it at, at Thrive Market. That's generally what I use. It's a sugar-free ketchup that just 
it doesn't have a lot of artificial sweeteners in it. It's just like no sugar added, right? She went on and on in this recipe about how she had never heard of or tried meatloaf without with ketchup glaze on it. And I mean, like, is I thought that was the only way you made meatloaf was with ketchup. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but said she loved it after she tried it. And I would have to agree. So this is going to go on. She brushed all sides and top with a little bit of that sugar-free ketchup. All right, so we are ready now. This goes, look how beautiful. It looks so nice. I like the idea of putting it in uh, the loaf pan to shape it before you put it in the oven. So this is going to go into the oven and it's going to take a while. 350 degrees. This is going in for 50 to 60 minutes. You want the center and the thickest part of it to register 160 degrees just, just to be safe. So we're going to do that now. I'm going to clean up and wash up. I'll show you this when it comes out of the oven and we're on to recipe number two. See you in just a bit. All right, guys, so we are back now with our second recipe. Our first recipe is not quite out of the oven yet, but I wanted to go ahead and get started on this. And this is a bacon wrapped keto meatloaf by the website dietdoctor.com. And this is a very popular recipe. It also includes a gravy, a separate gravy. And I'm sure it would be fantastic, uh, but we're omitting the gravy today because I mean, everything's better with gravy, right? <laughs> but to be as fair as possible, we're testing the meatloaf. All right, so now we're gonna start with um, our ground beef, but first we need to saute a little bit of onion. And so let's just get this butter melted and um, this recipe is a little bit different from the other one. The other recipe included, remember, Parmesan cheese and um, almond flour to help soak up moisture. And this recipe is including things like uh, aromatics, which are gonna release some moisture, and then heavy cream. We're adding moisture. So that's why I chose both of these. They seem to be two polar opposites of each other, but we're gonna test which one is the best. So let's get this going, and we're gonna saute these onions in this butter. Okay, so she said to saute the onions until they were soft but not browned, and that's what we've done here. And then we're gonna add them to our ground beef, and I've already taken the liberty of going ahead and sort of breaking up the beef a little bit just to lighten it up. Kind of helps, like I said, lift, separate, and get, get some air in there so it's not too dense, right? All right, so to this, our onions and meat, we're gonna add a few things, and let's start with the spices. Uh, this is salt pepper, and she said either basil, dried basil, or dried oregano, so I used a bit of both. I used, I did about half and half of each just to sort of see, see what, what the difference was. So um, we're going to add this, and again, try to spread it out so that you're not dumping it all directly in the center of the bowl because you want to do as little mixing as possible. And we're going to also add a beaten egg. And the egg is also going to be, I'm going to go ahead and mix it in this, um, this is heavy whipping cream, which is an unusual, which is an unusual ingredient in, I would think, in meatloaf, but uh, I'm excited to see how it turns out. So um, just to make sure everything's incorporated well, I added that egg into the, into the cream. All right, and lastly, a little bit of shredded cheese, and she specifically said shredded cheese. Didn't say what kind of cheese. Reading the um, comments, I found most people used uh, mild cheddar, so that's what, that's what I used as well. And yeah, I often use a bagged product. So I'm gonna try to mix this. Uh, because those onions are hot, I'm not gonna use my hands. Um, this is a lot more liquidy than our last one. I'm very intrigued by this, the heavy cream. That sounds really interesting. Okay, that's about as much as I wanna mess with that. So from here, we obviously shape this in a loaf and it's bacon wrapped keto meatloaf. So her instructions are pretty sparse. She says to um, form it into a loaf and wrap it in bacon and bake it in a baking dish, specifically a glass baking dish because you're gonna save the meat drippings for the gravy. 
Um, so she did not say to do this, but I'm gonna go ahead and do, I really liked that technique, the last one of using a loaf pan to make it into a loaf. And this also gives me the opportunity to lay my bacon out and put the, you know what I mean, wrapping it, fully wrapping it in bacon. I'm gonna use a little bit of avocado oil spray, just a, she did say a greased baking sheet, but I wanna make sure that bacon comes out. And this is that, um, you know, I, I, Thrive Market sells thousands of name brand products. You have the favorite ones you're used to buying at the store, but they also have their own brand and I love almost everything I've ever tried. Their avocado oil spray is so much cheaper than the stuff in the stores and it literally is just 100% avocado oil. That's all it is and I love it. I love the container in the spray. I know this is stupid. It's a wide container that makes a, I don't know how to say it. It's not just a round spray, it, it's perfect. I love it. Okay, so let's think about this. So right, we wanna wrap this in bacon. So what if we took our bacon and laid it in the pan like this so that when we flip it out, it's wrapped. And of course, I choose the bacon that's got a darn hole in the middle of it, right where I wanna be wrapping it and making it look pretty. Darn. All right, this proved easier said than done because the bacon does not want to sit upright. It wants to slide out of there, but we're going to figure out what we can do. So, throw in our meat mixture. Okay, so now we've got to transfer this to a greased glass baking dish. So I'm just going to spray some spray there. And then as carefully as possible, we've got to get this booger out of here. And this may have been the worst idea upon worst ideas. I don't know, but it's too late now because I done done it. So hopefully this comes out as a, yes, ma'am, a bacon wrapped loaf of meat. So without messing around with it too, oh, you can't move it once it's on there, you ain't moving it. So it's a little off centered, but it's just gonna have to live there. So, all right, before I touch anything else, the one in the oven is about to come out. This is gonna go in for 40 minutes uh, at about 40, for about 45, I'm sorry, this is gonna go in 400 degrees for about 45 minutes. So I'm gonna let all these cook. I'm gonna show you when they come out of the oven. I'm gonna cool them and I will meet you right back here in just a few minutes, okay? My hands are too dirty, but I wanna say I'll meet you in five, four, three, two, one. All right, so we are back and ready to test these beautiful meatloafs. As you can see, they're both here ready to go. This one's gonna be a little bit cooler than the second one we made, but it is still cool because um, it's just, you've got, you've got to let them rest for a little bit to, to absorb some of the juices. So before we test these, let's talk about nutrition. And I'm gonna give you the nutritional samples of this. But also before we begin, let's talk about how it can be problematic trying to calculate uh, macros for a recipe like this. So I know this is not the most appealing thing in the world, but I actually scrape, you know how when you make a meatloaf on a plan like this, you've got a lot of residual juices and fat that come off of it to the tune of that right there. Now remember also that this guy had almond flour in him, but all of this is solidified fat that has come off of this that are not going to be accounted for in the macros. This one is even more troublesome because of the, the bacon. Now see how much fat is there? I mean, that's probably a half a cup, and pro maybe even three quarters of a cup of fat. So unless you find a way to consume that fat, uh, the fat macros that are printed on the website so that we calculate ourselves when we put in all these raw ingredients are gonna change a little bit. And just as much with the fat as the calories, because as we know, fat has nine grams um, uh, calories per gram. So, I mean, that's a lot of fat. So the calories that we're gonna see here might be a little, and the fat might be a little bit different than what we're eating. Now, one caveat was that this recipe called for you to pour off all of this fat, which I gotta admit is a lot. Mix it with heavy cream and a dash of tamari and boil that down and simmer it down until it's a thick gravy, which is probably delicious. So, but there you're able to consume the fat. Um, not so much with this one. So just be aware that when you're making recipes like this and you're checking out fat, like, yeah, it's gonna look like a bunch of calories, but 
a lot of the calories are still sitting in the pan if you don't eat that fat. So our first recipe, long story short, our first recipe, this is Juicy Keto Meatloaf by HealthyRecipesBlog.com. And she says that this is eight servings. Now, that's pulling a little bit of a shenanigan to me because I don't think that's eight servings. You might get six. But the other side of that coin is this one, the second recipe. She claims this is four servings. I think you could get more than four servings out of that considering that's a half pound and a half ground beef and a half pound of bacon. So let's just go with, know that what you're getting into before you start it. All right, so if you make eight slices of this, one serving is 318 calories. You've got 25 grams of protein. You've got about 22 grams of fat. You've got three total carbs. You've got one gram of fiber, making this two net carbs per serving if you get eight servings out of it. The second recipe is dietdoctor.com. These are gonna vary. This number is gonna vary from the numbers that are on their website because their website lists the uh, servings with the um, uh, gravy and this is just just the meatloaf but if you make four servings out of this one serving is 877 calories you got 67 grams of fat you got 41 grams of protein carbohydrates total you got six and a half total carbs you got a half a gram of fiber for a total of six grams of net carbs. So it's saying that this is six grams, this is two grams, but remember this is supposed to serve twice as many people as that. So make of that what you will. Most importantly, what do they taste like? Was the almond flour a good, combina uh, a good solution to, to soaking up some of that fat and that juice? Or was the bacon and the um, uh, heavy cream added a, a perfect way to to increase the um, the juiciness of that. So this is oh this is set up nicely. Ooh that looks good. Sorry I realize I'm doing that off camera and you can't see it. So this is not a serving of a slice because I'm not I can't get eight out of that. I'm just cutting off some of this for us to try real quick. And as you see our bacon kind of shrunk up on us as you would expect. Um, this is considerably more juicy with a lot more fat on it. I mean, look at all that. But we're not gonna be eating that unless we make that gravy with it. So how is our first one? This is the one we were so careful with. It's got a nice little ketchup, sweet ketchup glaze. I mean, it's not sweet, but it's unsweetened ketchup, but that's, that's the point of it, right? It's supposed to have a little bit of a sweet whang to it. And it is kind of thick because of the almond flour. So, mm -hmm. that's tasty. Very traditional. Very traditional. A little bit tough. Could have been my fault. Mm. No complaints. Mm. Okay, that was really good. Now let's try our bacon wrapped. And again, her recipe calls for gravy with this, but holy, okay. First of all, it is much more tender. I mean, it's got a half a cup of heavy cream in it and nothing to soak up. Look at that. Can you see that? That is so good. That is so incredibly good. Juicy. The bacon. The onions. The onions. Now, I know you're going to say, onions are full of carbs, Wes. Onions are high carbs. Yeah, yeah, they are. You got to be careful with them. You know what else has carbs? Onion powder and garlic powder. Almost to, the, to a higher concentrate than regular onions do. This had onion powder and garlic powder. If you've not seen it, go check out my, um, I'm gonna put a link up to it up here, my Hidden Carbs video. 
Uh, spices, in at least in the United States, don't have to be labeled with uh, nutritional information. There's carbs. Just because you withdraw the water out of something to make it garlic powder or onion powder doesn't mean that you're taking out carbohydrates, you're taking out water. There's still plenty of carbs. Go look at my hidden carbs video. So, diet doctor who did this recipe, she must kind of feel like me that, like if, if you're gonna have the carbs in dried versus real, use a small amount of real onions and brown that and saute that. If you're gonna use the car, eat the carbs anyway, they might as well taste as good as they can. Um, I mean, this was a whole onion. I might, I might would have used a little bit less to get the, the carb count down, but uh, y'all. And I can't imagine, I can't imagine how good that is with the gravy. Holy smokes. Wow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> These are both really good, and I like ketchup <laughs> glazes, but I gotta give this one hands down to dietdoctor.com recipe because wow, that is fantastic. So there you have it, folks. Can it be done, low carb uh, meatloaf? You doggone better believe it. If you like the traditional ketchup kind, try this. Um, I might even add a little bit of the heavy cream to it like we did in this recipe because wow, this was so juicy and good. So thank you for coming along for the journey, guys. I say this every time. These videos are a way for me to maintain my low-carb way of eating. And looking in the end of that camera as often as I can helps keep me honest. So I appreciate that you have come along for the journey. Um, if you don't follow me on Instagram, be sure to check me out on Instagram and my Facebook page. I communicate there a little more frequently than I can, I'm able to here on, uh, on uh, YouTube. So, But if you're new here, be sure you hit the subscribe button down below. And if you're not new here, thank you for hitting the, the, the notification bell and for liking this. That really helps me out. If you guys can hit the like button, it lets YouTube know this is a video to recommend to other people. So that really helps me out and I appreciate that. So I also need to give a huge thank you to my sponsor, Thrive Market, for sponsoring this video. Uh, thank you so much for that. Um, if you guys want to support me, go support them. Check it out. Use the link here on the screen or in the video description down below, whether you choose the one month or the year membership that I do that gets it down to five bucks a month. Right now, if you use this link, you can get a free gifts up to 24 bucks with your first order. And as always, all shipments over $49 are free. And I think it's like the average person, uh, the average user of Thrive Market saves like 32, I think it's 32 bucks per order. Uh, just from the natural savings of, of shopping through there versus your regular supermarket. So I can't recommend it highly enough and they have been very good to me. So please go uh, share the love and, and check out their link below. Thank you so much Thrive Market. Also, I need to give a huge thank you to my Patreon sponsors. You're gonna see their names here on the screen, uh, right over here. They uh, are rock stars. If you don't know what Patreon is, think of it as the tip jar for the internet. It lets people like you who enjoy what people like me do here on YouTube. You give a dollar to a month just to sort of keep the train on the tracks and there's some special content over there for you that's just for Patreon members as well. So um, I thank them so much. Without you, I couldn't do this and, um, and, and your, your support means more than you could imagine. So thank you so much. I'll see you over on Patreon. Otherwise, I will see you guys in a very few uh, short time. I've got another video coming out right after this one. So thank you so much. I love you and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.